Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I hope that you will take out a machine, any machine, <laughs> and sew on this lovely Sunday. <laughs> So I obviously, as Scott had said in the chat, I was having machine issues. The Juki TL2010Q has gone kaputs again. So it's, it's being retired, like literally. So I had to set up the new Juki, uh, what is it called again? HZLF600. So I had to set this thingy up because unfortunately... I can't sew on a machine that doesn't want to sew. It's not working. But I'm not totally prepped for this one. I need to widen some bobbins so that I can get to my project. So I'm going to just uh, see who's all here real quick, and I'm going to start winding some bobbins. We got Katie, Kay, Kim, Janice, Shaquilt, uh, Renee, Nancy, Shirley, Ronnie, Geraldine, Raina, uh, where are we at? Katie, Karen, Becky. Uh, Teresa, Jacqueline, Malena, Delia, Kathy, Karen, and Diane, and a ton more. So welcome, everybody. If I didn't catch your name, hello and welcome. All right. Wine bobbin. Well, let's cut thread and wine some bobbin. Where did I put my snips and everything? Aha. <laughs> Yes, it is plenty jealous of the new one. Let's just say that. Because <laughs> it's uh, really not happy whatsoever. So I'm just going to use the new one. Which is perfectly fine because it's brand new and I should not have any problems with it. All right, so let's wrappy, wrappy, wrappy the bobbin. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, so while that quietly winds a bobbin, what else do I need? Extra thread. So I have this lovely case of tons of different Aurifil threads because I know it's not as speedy, but it does go faster than the brother. So I'm totally glad that I got this one. Because if I would have had to switch to the brother today, I think I would pull my hair out and I would be bald <laughs> by the end of the video. Because <laughs> that thing is so slow. <laughs> um, I have not ordered any machine tats for it. I'm just going to leave it bland and boring. <laughs> okay, so it stopped winding for whatever reason, all on its own. Um, okay. Well, that's not good. Why did it do that? It's uh, going through all the correct paths. Um, I don't know why, but I'll just wind another one because I'm going to need more than one bobbin for this. I'm so used to sticking it through the... Um, thingamabobber. Well, you put somebody else with you. <sighs> At least it has a quiet bobbin winder. I'll make it work more. Hi, kitty kitty. So I'm totally not used to this machine, so I'm going to do my best to sew. Even though it has a quarter-inch seam button uh, with the A-foot. Is that an A-foot? I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, yep. This time... See, I knew I was at the end of a spool, so that's why I needed a spool. <laughs> I'm on top of things today. This machine doesn't have a problem with the Aurifil thread, so now I have a machine that I could actually use it on. Oh, let's wind one more bobbin, though, just for... Because I go through a lot when I sew. Oh, it would be nice to have a spool cap on, huh? Yeah, that would be smart. I'm not used to all this extra stuff, spool caps and all that. The other Juki doesn't need all that stuff because <laughs> it just uses big spools. All right, 
where did that fling? Way over there. All right, got me some bobbins. Got me a foot on here. An Does empty. Does take regular size bobbins? Uh, it just takes the pl clear plastic ones, which I have a ton of because it's the same ones as the brother. So at least it looks the same. So I'm going to go with it. They're the same. <laughs> Aha, look at that. So it doesn't even roll a full bobbin. That's kind of strange. It rolls it halfway. That's very weird. None of these rolled full, so. Is it the 15 bobbin size? I have no idea what the bobbin size is. I'd have to look at the book because I don't know. Under that. Up, over that. Down this, up that, down this. On Eight inches is the throat space on this new machine. And then. Might have to loosen the screw to remove the bottom pressure foot to the right a little bit. And guess what? The threader on this one works every time. <laughs> That's a plus. <laughs> I might have to loosen the screw. Okay. All right. So today, now that I've rolled some bobbins, we're good. We're going. I am working on a pattern called BQ4 by Maple Island Quilts. BQ4 by Maple Island Quilts. And I had already cut out all of my pieces and my fabric is directional. So I actually... <coughs> I also sewed all my strip units together and subcut those. So everything's ready. My fabric was directional. So when it came to the layout, every block goes the same exact way. And I can't do that because my fabrics are directional and in the pattern it shows to twist it one way, then the other way, one way. But that would put my directional fabrics upside down. I didn't want that. So whatever becomes the top of the quilt, if the fabric is directional, that will always be the top of the quilt because the fabric is directional. So I actually looked at the other chart of the layout itself because I'm making the queen size. Um, on the layout itself, I took the right side up one and then the one that they flipped upside down and I actually put my pieces around it in the direction of the upside down way so that my directional fabric can stay right side up. So that is what I am doing is this, and I'm making the, hold on, let's see how big it comes out. 96 by 108, 96 and a half by 108 and a half is how big this quilt is supposed to be. And no worries, guys, I am also today, sometime I'll start it, giving away two BQ4 patterns. So I have two extra patterns of this, which will be a giveaway in a little bit. I'll start it. But for now, I want to start working on this. Oh, uh, my address is in the description below every video or in the link that Scott just put. Alrighty, where was I? So I need to go back to the page that I'm on. And I am going to start. I'll have to look that up. I haven't read. I like skimmed through the book, but I haven't read the book. I have a problem with um, reading books. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I only need twelve, so I'm just gonna stick that in one of these piles. I am making BQ4 by Maple Island Quilts. And for those of you that want the pattern, just go to the BPQN. Is that what it is? Yeah, BPQN. QBPN. QBPN, sorry. And they sell it there. I don't have a direct link to that because I forgot to do that before the video because I had machine issues. But Scott put a link in, and all you have to do is type in BQ4 Maple Island Quilts. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I'm just gonna put that in that pile and put that back over here. 
I'm making sure that I have 12 of everything in each pile because my piles all have 12. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I'll grab one from there for 12. Let's make sure I have 12 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And last pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Put that over there for now and put this back right there okay so now the chain piece and i have a quarter inch seam built onto this machine so let's hope i could sew straight <laughs> so let's see if i could sew straight with my quarter inch seam uh i probably will if i get off <laughs> Because, yeah, I'm, oh man, did I mess this up? No, okay, good. It goes that way. You said something and it made me think I was doing something wrong. Well, I said your little magnetic seam guy. Yeah. Which you love on the other two pieces. Yeah. That still works. That thing breaks. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a lot quieter. I'm going to check this quarter inch seam here and see. Oh, looky. I think I did pretty darn good, even set at the quarter inch seam thing. It does not sew as fast, though. So we may be here for a while. <laughs> I can't zoom through anything. Not like normal, but we're going to make it work. Stay where I put you, you seam. No, I can't sew straight. I really struggle with that, guys, the sewing straight thing. Like, I cannot keep it going straight. That's why I use the magnetic seam guide 90% of the time. Nope, I got to learn. Got to learn. Do you have it on the rabbit? No, I have it, um, yeah, on the rabbit, yes. <laughs> I had to think about that and look at it. Yeah, that's pretty slow. But at least I don't need to pull my hair out because the other machine is slower. If I can get the 12 blocks made, then I'll be good to start. <laughs> oh, it's behind you right there. Yep, this is a computerized machine. Yep, I can use a magnetic seam guide on any machine. What? Yeah, I got some mail this week. It was a card. You can hold this up, Scotty. It's a postcard in a card. In a card. That is the postcard I got this week. So you know who you are. Thank you very much for that. And one more. I'm totally not used to sewing slower. All right, snip these apart. You want me to grab that off the machine there? What? The magnet. No, I have the magnet right over here. 
All right, and now I'm going to finger press them and then place them where they go. And then sew the next set. That way I don't get anything messed up because one side I had to put on, even though if you flip the block, it's the same exact thing. I had to put it differently because of the directional fabric. But I'm still following the pattern, just directionally. Where's my finger thing? There it is. I do like the large workspace on this machine, having it being the, only an inch smaller than the other Juki, which is nine inches. Yeah, I'll look. I'm not going to look right now, but I will look. Definitely is a lot quieter. <laughs> not used to a quiet machine. I've had a loud machine for almost seven years. <laughs> All right, let's do this unit now. Just do it this way, like this, and just remember to turn it all the way around. So hopefully everybody's had a good week. I uh, finished my friend's quilt. It is... Uh, way too big for me to show but i made sure to put it on my computer so that i could show you guys what it looks like so i shall hold this up to the screen so that you guys can see how the uh quilt turned out the tranquility quilt there it is so that's the Tranquility quilt in all of its glory. It's 106 by 106, so that's how it turned out. Obviously, it's washed out because of the thing, but being on a computer screen. But that's how it turned out, and it needs to be quilted. I haven't quilted it yet, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to hold it up online. So I had to make sure that there was a picture on the computer so that I could show you guys how it turned out. Because I promised I would show you when it was finished. <laughs> So there that was. Um, so that I did this week. And then I also long arm quilted, which you saw on yesterday's uh, long arm vlog. I long arm quilted two quilts from in the closet. I have a lot more to do. And it's like I keep adding to it. So am I ever going to get all of my quilts quilted this year? I don't know, but... I can't not not make quilts. I just need to learn how to quilt them after they're finished so that way it all gets done at once. But being as I'm on YouTube and I, I make tons of stuff all the time, I kind of got to pick and choose when I quilt what I quilt. <laughs> so never, no, nothing ever gets completely done right away. What? Yeah, I have client quilts to get done too, so I can't constantly always focus on mine, but yeah, a lot of people asked when I posted the video unboxing this machine if this was replacing the Juki. No, this is not replacing the Juki. This is was purchased to do applique zigzag stitches. Everything that I ever used my brother machine for, this is replacing that brother. So this is like my spare machine when I have company and or need to do some applique or top stitching or zigzag blanket stitch or fancy stitches because this also has that. So it's just my, I got it as an extra. 
But the Juki has to be replaced because it is broken. I fixed it. It worked for a while. I got all this stuff pieced and, uh, and the rest of that um, quote from my friend, but I decided it doesn't want to work again. So it's throwing a temper tantrum. Probably have to take it apart again and check the power stuff, the power lines. Since it only works when it wants to, you know. I do like that this machine has a thread cutter on it. That makes it better than that little brother machine that I have. I don't know why I'm snipping these apart. I have to add another end to each of these. I guess I can do it anyway, though. That way it's all nice and proper. Oops. Yeah, I did wear it out. I, I do have to say out loud. I make a lot of quilts. I make more quilts than the average quilter because I'm on YouTube and I always have to think of something different to quilt. I can't, you know, even if I was just doing once a month, a whole quilt, that's piecing a whole quilt once a month. But no, I piece a whole quilt once a week, usually. <laughs> um, and for a while, I was doing more than one a week. So all that was done on that Juki. So it's been through, it's been through a lot and more than the normal quilter. So it definitely got its use. It's billions and billions and billions of stitches if it had a stitch counter on it. It doesn't, but if it did, it would be three times as much as my long arm has, and my long arm has a lot on it. It's already in the billions, so. And that does have stitch counter. I use my machines quite a lot. All right, now to hook these fillers on the end of this. I do like that I can use the Aurifil spools up now and all those little Mettler spools and all those brands that I have in the little spools. Because I wasn't able to use those before. Uh, if you're shorter than me, yes, you can still long arm quilt. The machines, the frames that they come with these days, they all can be adjusted in height. So you can adjust it really low, you can adjust it really high. It doesn't go as high. No frame goes as high as tall as my friend Eric is, but they do go to like, say, almost six foot, most likely for a normal six foot tall person, because men use the frames, but... If you're six foot nine or seven or eight or any of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should still be able to use the long arm if you're short. My uh, daughter-in-law is five foot 10 and she stands perfectly in front of my long arm at mine's current height. So she'd be able to use it at its current height at four foot 10. Uh, you should have yearly maintenance on your long arms. I, on the other hand, have not. I do my own maintenance, my own cleanings, my own everything. Now, I have not taken the long arm apart, if that's what you're asking. I haven't done that one. And I don't really want to because it's under a warranty for like 10 years or something like that, parts-wise. Can you quilt the quilt on the Juki you're using? Yes, a quilt to be quilted on this machine. I'm making the quilt. This is piecing it. She's probably talking about free motion quilting and stuff. Okay, I got you. What kind of long arm do you have? I have a King Quilter 2 Elite Special Edition long arm. And Scott put a link in for it. I don't like that all these seams are flipping on that front piece should be flush. No, let's go that way. I want it flush. 
the seams, uh, because they're facing the other way, are hitting this front piece and they're flipping on the way up. Yep, every single one of them. Come on. Right sides together. Can you turn the fan on? Technically, that doesn't need to be open. I left it open because I was rolling the bobbins. But I just realized that my face can be seen better with it closed. <laughs> because I'm short. I could probably lift my chair a little. <laughs> I am sitting kind of low today. All right. Why did you choose that two piece for an I chose this model because I was in a quick, fast hurry to choose something to get. <laughs> I don't know if you guys uh, know because I don't remember if I said it in my video or not. This was, so I won second place on the Sewing Machines Plus Quilt Fest for uh, People's Choice. And I didn't need another long arm. I had one a long arm and I didn't need another one. So I contacted them well before I got some kind of shipping info and said, instead of me driving all the way there to bring this machine right back, can I just trade it now? And so I traded it in and this is one of the things I traded for. Yeah, so this is my trade. So I kind of just wanted, I didn't even know this had monogramming. I didn't really read through the whole thing. Uh, I didn't know it had a thread cutter or anything. Scott put a link to this machine, though, so you can learn more about it. But I definitely didn't know it had monogramming. I didn't know it had any of that because I didn't read it. I just read that the reviews on it were good. So, yeah. And so far, I'm happy with it. I've been playing with it quite a bit. Just not reading the book while playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Typical me. I could probably learn a lot from the book if I just read it. Oop. There we go. And one more, and then I could start putting the first pieces on the blocks and then put it's the blocks together. Right that's awesome. I'm glad that you love it because I love mine. All right, so I'm going to chain piece these together now. They should be exactly the same size, and they are. Line it up and hopefully sew a straight line. <laughs> These directional blocks shall uh, hopefully work out. It definitely sews a beautiful stitch, that's for sure. I do like the stitch. It's uh, very nice and clean and straight. I haven't tried like any like quilting or anything on it though since I got it because I don't really free motion quilt because I own a long arm. <laughs> but my free motion quilting skills sit down are a lot different than my stand up skills. <laughs> I don't have the seam guide on here. I'm actually sewing without it. I'm trying to follow the edge of the foot, which is at the quarter inch line, which I'm not used to doing, but so far I'm doing pretty good.
I guess when you sew slower, it's easier to sew straighter. Because <laughs> I don't sew straight at all usually. But I am sewing slower than normal. Yeah. I just can't believe the Juki decided, the other Juki decided to act up right before live stream. We even tried thinking, well, maybe it's the pedal. So since I had an, another pedal for this machine, I plugged it into the Juki because it's the same pedal and it didn't work. What kind of what? Long arm frame. The long arm frame goes with the King Quilter. It's a King Quilter frame that goes with the King Quilter. King Quilter machine, Scott put a link in for you, is specifically uh, sewing machines pluses machine. It's their their trademark machine. In the long run, though, it's a handy quilter. But the frame itself is the King Quilters frame. So it goes with the machine. No, it's plastic. Plastic. It's all plastic. It's fine. It's doing the job. Doing the job that I need it to do right now. It's doing it a lot slower, but if you had a shower charge, that went through the surge protector because we didn't have to change out the other. Yep, oh. it could be from the surge protector in the first place. Yes. I don't know. Everything looked good in the machine when I took it apart. Nothing looked fried. Nothing looked burnt. So I don't know. It worked for, since I cleaned it and did the, you know, video and posted it on here about the inside of a Juki, it worked perfectly fine. So I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm not that much of a machine mechanic. I just know how to take them apart completely and clean them and oil them and keep it clean and maintenance, I guess, is the word for it. I don't know how to, I mean, I do know how to take some things apart and change them, but I don't know how to ch change or fix other things. Like power. Sure, I can figure it out, though. It could have. Here. Have you named your new sewing machine? I don't name my machine. So that originally was Juki, but now this is Juki. So that'll just be Juki, and this will be Juki's brother <laughs> because it replaced a brother. <laughs> I don't really name them. Maybe I should keep track of what machines I have, but. Because when I refer to Juki, I could be referring to either machine now. All right, so now to attach Juki 2.0, yeah. All right, this goes on top of here now, like this. And there's no seams to match, so that's good. Yep, I increased the speed. This is as fast as it goes. Oh, there is a seam to match. I just realized it right now. Look at that. Definitely want that seam going that way, though. Stay. So here is a block. It's not pressed yet, but... Go that way.
So it's almost like an illusion block. It creates a block around the block. So it makes it look like it's floating. And when they go together. Huh? With the pattern? I picked it. It was a three little fat quarter thing. <coughs> that all had the same prints in it. So I'm running the same prints over and over and over again. Because there was only six different prints to choose from. But it was the only thing I had 24 fat quarters of. So <laughs> to make a queen size. It's going to go that way. Stay the way I put you. And then nest the seam. And there is another block. Do you know anything about speed settings on a genome? She has it set at full, but it's only going to have speed. I have no idea about the speeds on the genomes. Or genomi, or however other people say it. I have actually no idea the proper way to say it. Some people say genomi, some people say genome. I have no idea. One of those is correct. <laughs> this pattern is Maple Island Quilt. So probably somebody from Maple Island Quilts wrote it. Debbie Bow Bowles, that's not a really nice last name, but B-O-W, Elliot Bowles, Bow Bowles. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's either Bowles or Bowles. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's an older pattern, though. But oldies are goodies. All right, I'm just going to chain piece these through instead of one at a time. All of a sudden, it's quiet. Any questions? I have not quilted Sculliver yet. Um, since I planned to custom quilt it, I needed to have time for it to be on the frame for a long period. So I have to get my client quilts all done first. And I needed to order backing fabric, which we did. So... I haven't got that far, but I will sooner or later. And it'll just get, when I quilt it, I will long arm quilt it and throw it in the Sculliver album, the, the Sculliver playlist. However, I do quilt it. That way you guys can have the general idea how to quilt your own, too. The needle is at the quarter inch line. Yes, it has a number two button, takes it to a quarter inch right away. So I'm getting a quarter inch seam every time. As long as I keep my uh, fabric aligned with the um, foot of the machine. What are you using to press 
Uh, a wooden presser, and you can find these at www.tquilts.com. She sells these. It's a wooden finger press, and she also sells the matching uh, seam ripper stiletto combos. So you can find T's uh, website from her YouTube channel. There's a link to her YouTube channel. Scott put in for you. And then, oops, why did I put that away? I was still using that. It just saves from breaking fingernails, which I'm trying to grow so that way I can go get them covered and be pretty and painted because they haven't been in a long time now. The only feature I'm not liking on this is it starts out really slow and then it goes fast. Obviously, I think little machines like this have to do that, though, because if not, it would probably break thread every time. But it does go really slow. Why did you choose the long run you had? What specific reason? Because of its price. And I'm actually glad I chose the long arm I have currently because of its price. Because guess what? It's still going. It still works. If I want to add robotics in the future, I can still do that because they're always upgrading that for that machine. Um, and honestly, I got a big bang for my buck price-wise. And it's gone down in price since I purchased mine, so you can get it even cheaper. But I really originally wanted to get the Handy Quilter uh, Amara, and then when I saw the Forte, I almost wanted to get that, but that was way out of our price range. And our local shop tried to get me the Amara, a used one, for cheap, but that price still couldn't beat the price of the same... It was two inches shorter, 21 inches and 20 inches. They couldn't, or 20 inches is the Amara. They couldn't um, beat the price of the current one I have for the same, pretty much almost same size on a 12 foot frame. And it's pretty much the same machine. So I went for it because of the price. And it was shipped here for free. So that even was even better. I would have had to pay shipping for the anywhere else. because they have freight shipping on some of the other websites that I was looking on. And they include that obviously in your price, but still makes it a lot more expensive. But I tested out tons of machines before buying a long arm. I tested out APQS machines. I tested out Gamel machines. I tested out handy quilters. I even tested out a FAF, like an old FAF model that was turned into a long arm that I found at somebody's Somebody was selling one locally, so I went and looked at it. Definitely didn't want that. Um, there was one other machine I tested out, uh, uh, Grace. And yeah, I settled with the King Quilter. And no regrets. And they had a payment plan. That was also the other plus side. You can have a payment plan on the long arms and sewing machines and stuff through Sewing Machines Plus, which is a plus. <laughs> you have to qualify for them, but still, I don't think it takes much to qualify. You just have to pay all your bills on time, you know? You ever mess with the Moxie? Yes, I messed with the Moxie. I just played with the Moxie, actually. Uh, a week ago when we went to the quilt shop. <laughs> I like it. It's a cute little machine. Um, I honestly, I mean, I have my honest opinion about long arm machines. If you really want a long arm and you want to be able to do all your big quilts and you want to get them done in a, without stress, I honestly think that the bigger machines, I mean, most people don't have space for it all, but some of the frames, honestly, the, the smaller quilting space, you're only lim you're, you're limited to what you can and can't do in small spaces. And the second thing is th most of the tables that come with the small quilting machines, you still have to baste your quilt. That means you still have to lay it on a table. You still have to lay it on the floor and either pin or spray baste it and then move those pins and stuff out of the way when you're, you know, clipping and clamping and moving and, and all that stuff. So, I mean, 
there's pluses and minuses to sm small machines, but they run nice. I liked it. It was a cute little machine, but I definitely wouldn't want it for myself. And I've thought about a bigger throat space for myself, but I'm short, so 18 inches is perfect because of my reach. 20 would be better, but I got 18, and that's what I work with. Okay. Now, I have 12 blocks made. That only took 40-something minutes. <laughs> Now, huh? Right? I would have that whole next pile done if I was on the other one. <laughs> That's okay, though. That's okay. We're going to make do with what we got, right? That's what we do. We make do with what we got. And right now, my Juki is you not what... Your new Juki? Yeah, I like it. That's cool. It has all sorts of features that I wasn't expecting. I know I can just like scoot myself over here. Make it easier on me to be right at the finger pressing. And yes, I am just finger pressing for now. I'll press later. My main focus today was to get blocks made and I thought that would be going a lot faster than it is, but you know, obviously Life has other plans, and that's okay. My shirts just bunch up. Maybe if I cut all the sleeves off of all these and turn them into tank tops, maybe they won't do that. Just restitch it. I think that's what's doing it because of my broad shoulders. Jim, you haven't sewn all week. Oh no, that's not good. Well, I knew that. I didn't know he's didn't bring like hand sewing or anything. I usually bring hand sewing with me to the hospital. I honestly don't know. Let me press these last two pieces and we'll scan through the book and see if it says. My other machine is 1500. Or 1400. No, it's 1500. The other Juki. All right, those are done. So I'm going to move my blocks. There's now 12 of these. I'm going to move these out of the way and start on the next ones. All right, here. Is the frame on this thing closer included in the price? Yes. You could also just buy the machine only. You have to click the link I send you to from my videos. That's the machine and the frame. Then they have the machine only in another ad. Let's see if this machine says what it sews. Twelve. Let's see. Kind of curious. Oh. It doesn't say there, so let's see if it says. Nope, so far it don't say. I'm going to assume it's less than a thousand. <laughs> it's probably like 800 stitches per minute. That is to 
or less. Ah, see? I knew it was something like that. It's definitely a lot slower. All right, let's make sure I got 12 in each of these piles now. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Those can go over there. So there's twelve of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. And one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two from here. Eleven, twelve. There we go. All right. Let's sew these sections together. Just going to chain piece them through, same as last time. Come on, stop being stuck together. I just counted all you. You should have movement now. This is the Exceed Quilt and Pro Series, the HZLF 600. HZLF 600. Hmm? Oh, you didn't, you didn't type in how fast? Yes, I did. Oh. They're giving me a person. Interesting. You can also say, what is the stitch per minute? So what is the Juki, the other Juki, the TL 2010Q? Well, look it up to make sure. I can see it. I figured. I knew that's what it was. Yes. My long arm only so stitches 2,000 stitches per minute. So yeah, 1,500 is pretty quick for a domestic machine. The little brother, I have no idea. It's a SQ9285. SQ what? 9285. That one's going to be super slow. That one's like... And I am air sewing. Uh, 
the height and then the bottom loader. Oh, here it is, 710. Oh, yeah. So the, the little brother machine that this is replacing only has 710 stitches per minute. So it's definitely a lot different. Oh, what happened here? Come on, there we go. Tracy said the what? DDL. Oh, she. you're talking about the industrial machine, right? All right, where was I air sewing stopped? Do you think this Juki will sew bags as far as thickness? This Juki should sew through bags, but I'm not going to use it for that. TL 2010Q? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my other Juki is a TL 2010Q. Huh? Oh, and Scott put a link in for it. I don't have to say it every time. I thought I said it earlier. I tangled up on my lap. There we yeah, go. the 8700 is the industrial. Yep, I kind of figured. I haven't said it yet. Feel like this is taking forever. <laughs> it's not as bad though. It's a lot better than the little brother. So I'm not pulling my hair out yet. <laughs> Maybe when I go to piece the long once these are turned into big, huge blocks and long rows, maybe that's when I'll start pulling my hair out. <gasps> Funny thing is, it feels like it stitches faster on the decorative stitches than it does on a straight stitch. Maybe that's just because the needle moves differently when it's doing the decorative stitches. <gasps> I don't know. It's just the way it feels, I guess. Okay, one more. All right, oops, I'm gonna snip these apart and then goes this way. So that seam goes out that way. Okay. I'm just going to lay them down over that way, just like this. Ah, come on. I know I'm not using my little purple thing, this, which is right here in front of my face. Snippity snippity with the regular snips. Gotta be smarter than that, Tiffy. And it's blowing my hair in my face. All right, now to sew on this. Yeah. The thread cutter works just fine on here. Yep, works just fine, dandy. This is 
We can't fix the other one. Are we going to take it to be fixed? Um, I should take it to be fixed, honestly. But I, uh, you guys need to watch some more videos so that it makes a little bit more money so that <laughs> I can afford to fix it because <laughs> it's probably going to be costly. Because I doubt I'll be able to fix it myself. I don't know what's wrong. With, like I said, I don't do the electrical part. So, but watching my videos helps. You guys just watch the videos. I should open up a giveaway. Hi, Mom. I totally know why content creators use the Juki TL2010Q the most and all those faster machines like the Brother PQ1500 and the um, Baby Lock Jazz and all those machines because we're on a video and we want to get things done faster. <laughs> so we have to use a faster machine. I feel like this is more boring to watch me sew on a slower machine. And I have to pay attention because I'm watching the, make sure my fabric goes through. When I use the seam guide, I look up a little bit more. Have I ever used what? Wovens? Yes, I have a woven quilt. Can you use quilt quilt. And cotton as background fabric and Yeah, you can mix wovens and cotton. I have one hanging in the closet that's just all wovens. It frays a lot though, so just beware. It frays a lot more than regular quilting cottons. Hmm? Yeah. Yes, I'm using my new machine, Mom, because the Juki, the other Juki, Juki A, <laughs> it's Juki B, uh, decided to not work today when I sat down to wind some bobbins to get ready for today's live stream. It said, no, we will not work for you, which sucks. All right. Let me get it set, set up. Um, I didn't have anything, no, I, that I, I don't remember, I have to go look. Um, let's check this out real quick. What size strips did you use in your smaller long start in your own start quilt? Well, I use two and a half inch strips or three. It depends on the Lone Star quilt that I made because I've made tons of them. Some I've used three inch strips, some I use two and a half inch strips, some I use two and a quarter inch strips. It all depends on which one. I don't type as fast, guys. Mm -hmm. It's a different one. She's Greenland. I have no idea.
Where am I at? Right there. Thank you. All right. All right, there is a giveaway. So if you type in explanation gift, this is open to anybody worldwide because it's patterns and patterns go in a regular envelope to be shipped. So if you are outside the United States, you're welcome to enter this giveaway. Yeah, enter. This is an anybody can enter giveaway. Explanation Australia, gift. The, the, the line with the dot is the explanation point mark thing and then the word gift. And I have two. BQ4 patterns, and I'm just going to draw from the same giveaway on both, so we don't have to worry about entering a bazillion times. And there goes my shirt again. Why does it do this? Is the microphone too heavy or something? Fine, just let it do its thing. All right, so now I'm stacking these back up so that I can sew them on. I'm not even going to press them with the finger thing either. I'm just going to sew them on. So I'm going to make sure this is correct. That's correct. That's correct. Look at the thingy again. Top this way, down that way, on the bottom, and up the side. Okay, perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna just chain piece these through now. Huh? I'll have to come look. No, those are being saved for another time. Oh. It's... I'm going to step away for... one the other into the fabric room. That's the only thing about having the two rooms in two different places. <laughs> Not yet. I said it for a few minutes. on my hair blows it's, I have such fine thin hair and it literally just like all these little hairs I was just telling my mom on the phone the other day these little hairs I don't know how they're so little but they like blow into my eyes they blow into my some of them are longer and they get stuck in my mouth or they blow into my nose it's so weird so I think that really really sucks about having thin hair very thin fine hair It should be. Why does the mouse not work up there? It's so weird. I don't 
see, but we're going to look anyway. Oh, it's only on for the moderators. Oh, really? It said everyone. It's not loading for some reason now. Uh, you can do it again. Oh, it is weird for the moderators. All right, we're going to close that out and we're going to re do it. Confirm. Custom. Edit. It says subscribers. I'm going to try it one more time, and if it doesn't work, we'll do it the old fashioned way. We'll just pick a number. Okay. The way I like to do it. All right. Try it again, guys. Sometimes we have these problems. So everybody try entering explanation gift. Oh, there it goes. It went right away. So I see all the people entering now. Okay, yes. Now it's working. Now it's working. See, if you would have told me that like five seconds ago, I would have been well, able to fix it. Well, they were saying it, but I was in the other room with you. Oh. I didn't see it. Okay. It's working now. I'll let that run. Let's see. All I see half the time is get, 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 get. I don't see when they tell me. Oh. There's no need. All right. Let's get all these sewn up, and hopefully, I'll be able to have gotten these 24 blocks sewn together by the end of today's video. <laughs> And that'll give me 24 more blocks to sew, but the bigger ones. Because I have to do the long blocks after this, because these are the short blocks. This whole following a quarter inch thing is it's getting easier and easier as I go though, so that's a plus. <laughs> I wish I could do that on the juke other juki. Oh I know. I could name my machines Dragon and Butterfly. Because that one goes fast and this one goes slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I like dragons and butterflies. <laughs> I probably won't remember that I said that though. <laughs> oh, it's funny. True. Okay, I'll think of new names. We can we can call them right now broken and so yeah. <laughs> broken and not broken. <laughs> broken and not broken. <laughs> yeah, lady says since you're in Arizona, it should be road runner. I like that. Yeah, could be. Could My little turtle, road runner. Road yeah, could be road runner and turtle. That one's road runner. Yeah, this one's turtle. Beat bunnies in the backyard. So road runner and coyote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure which is faster though, a roadrunner or a coyote. Because I've seen roadrunners run, they're not very fast, and I've seen coyotes run, they're not very fast either. Because <laughs> we have both of those here. I have 48 blocks total to make. Which will yield a queen size quilt. A 97 by 108 or something like that. Is that what I said earlier? 96 by 108. Both in halves. 96 and a half by 108 and a half. Isn't our closest place to fix that Vegas? Yeah. We might, Laura, yes, uh, but we might have a local in Vegas. 
Yeah. What did you? Well, I don't know what you're trying to tell me to say. Oh, well. I know that there is a machine repair shop in Bullhead, which is an hour from me. Um, that's as far as I know. <laughs> and I don't know what they work on. You know, some machine shops are like specific models and brands that they only work on. A long time ago, I had a brother machine, and none of the repair shops that were open at the time in the area would work on it. They're like, uh, just go buy another one at Walmart. <laughs> I was like, okay, because it was going to cost too much. Oh, wiener, wiener. Alrighty, let's choose a winner. Winner. Oh, where's the button? That's the button. All right, let's choose some winners. We have Beverly Akins. You are one winner of one of the BQ4 patterns. Beverly Akins. And then, second winner is Agnes Amenez. A menace. Yeah. You are the second winner. So congratulations to Beverly and Agnes. Yay. Make sure you email me. Scott will put it in the chat. Um, you just have to copy and paste it. Send me an email and tell me your address so I know where to ship these off to. All right. Giveaway done. See how quick and easy that is. Well the second time around. <laughs> all right, yeah. now, <laughs> now, first time it wasn't easy. now to sew these all together. And notice I still have yet to press anything. All right. I just have one steamed nest right here. Ooh, and I do want that one to go that way. Huh? Yes, Becca took her juki in too. It had a spow day. Oops. Oh, I've been getting questions about the knee lift lately. Some people are curious how it is they cannot figure out how to properly function the knee lift and or they just have issues with the, the back and forth thing with the knee lift, you know, being able to use it. So to properly use a knee lift, you properly need to be sitting in front of your machine to a point where your leg, your right leg, because that's the side the knee lift is on. Oops, that was not supposed to happen. Um, the side that the knee lift is on, if you turn your chair and your body ever so slightly, your knee hits that lever. The lever kind of comes out at an angle towards your leg, and the whole entire bar right here, this part of a knee lift, sits at your knee. So as soon as you need to lift your press foot, you just move your knee in and out like this, you know. So if you're sitting in front of your machine and you can't touch it, so you're like way over here, then you're not properly sitting in front of your machine and you're always angling yourself to the side to sew. Properly is right in front of it where your knee is touching that knee lift. So if you slightly, well, in my chair, I can't spread my legs very well to open the knee lift, but I can tip myself in my chair and make it go up and down like that. So I kind of wanted to answer that because I got it in a couple of comments. What part of the knee do you press with? Um, how about I just bring the camera around so that you can see in two seconds. Let me rip this seam because it uh, the whole fabric shifted on me. Oh, crud. And then I just ripped at it and opened all the seams. Go figure. Well, that's not good. 
Gotta remind myself not to rip things. Uh, I'm gonna just show them the knee lift real quick. Okay. So, knee lift. I'm gonna come around here so that you guys can see how... No, it does not take much pressure. Hold on. So we're going to pull you out. The camera is going to wiggle and squirm because I'm holding it without a thing. All right. So you're sitting in front of your machine. Sorry for the movement, but this is where you should be sitting. So about right here. So when your body is right here, do you see the knee lift right here? That when you go like this, it hits. I'm short, so it hits right at the knee. Some people are taller and have longer legs, so it hits about right here, which kind of is a little bit easier. But mine hits at my knee, and if I can't spread the legs, I just do this. I just turn the chair, because this is my bad hip, so you know after a while it starts getting annoying. But just turning the chair ever so slightly so that when you turn, it lifts it. But you gotta sit directly in front of, so you're you're sewing just like this and it's right in front like that yes thank you my daughter gave them to me but that's how the knee lift works so most come out that side right there and then it makes it so much easier because you're lifting with your knee and you have both hands free i obviously don't at this very second because i'm holding a camera but both hands are free to hold a seam or to adjust or keep things straight or anything like that because the knee lift helps so just just let you guys i wanted to cover that because that's how that works so you just i turn my chair most of the time but when i'm standing and stuff i can do the same thing i don't know if i can do it from here but when i stand and so i just take my knee and do this and it lifts it so even though my desk is kind of low but that's what i do so i just like knock it to the side so I can still use it standing. It's, it takes a bit to get used to, but that's how it works. Not bad, actually. And it, I mean, some people get it right away. Some people don't. It, it takes some time to get used to, but it's best if you have a, a cloth chair because you can actually move your leg better on a cloth chair than you can on a vinyl or leather chair. On this chair, especially when I'm wearing pants, my legs don't move as easily. And my hip really hurts, so it's kind of hard to, you know, control that. But that's how it that's how it works. So, and it makes it easy. See, two hands, my foot is lifted. And this has that extra height foot, too. So, that you can see that's down. But it, the high, look how high it lifts up. It goes really high. I could stick my fingers under there. It's a pretty high... Um, but, but that just allows you to use both hands instead of, you know, just one hand. I find it a lot easier. But most machine, a lot of machines now come with a knee lift. I, the little, like, Walmart machines don't, but machines like this do. So say you had a seam that wasn't flipped, but you don't want to have to go back like this every time. That's where the knee lift comes in handy. You flip your seam, lift your foot. Make sure it's staying down, and bam, it works. So you didn't have to go and lift everything up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then I just adjust this. All right. While we are here, we are also going to do an auction real quick today of a quilt so in a second i'm gonna bring out the quilt and hold it up so you can see for those of you who don't know an auction is it's just where a quilt has been in my cupboard for a long time and i just want to auction it off to the highest bidder and then we ship it out it's Free shipping within the U.S., uh, outside of the U.S. If you do want to bid on an auction, you do need to pay your shipping. And other than that, as soon as you're done and you win the auction, you can pay either PayPal, or and that has a fee, a small fee, or you can pay by using Zelle. 
And that you can all let me know by emailing me and telling me you are the winner of said quilt. Can you pass it to me? Oh, yeah, it's, it's just a little thing. quilt today. I usually don't auction off the big ones. It's usually just the little guys. It is approximately probably 36, 37, 38, 39-ish inches square. No, I'm good. So here is the quilt. We're going to start it off at $20. Oh, you can actually the other side. So this is the front side. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, I did do a video showing you how to quilt the flower motif that is on here. The back side of this little quilt, it's a baby quilt, by the way, it has Disney princesses on it. And you can see those little flowers that are quilted on it. So there that is, and it's bound in white. I usually don't put white binding on baby quilts, but this one deserved white binding. <laughs> so it has white binding on the edge. There's You're the quilting. Oh, and, <laughs> and loose threads because it's on everything. So I don't know what the bid is at, but it started at $20. We're at $50 for Paula. All right, we'll let that run for a second. But that's the quilt. I'm just going to continue sewing for just a minute. 55 for Rita. Rita? Oh, Ritva, sorry. Manchester. Ritva. Miss Manchester. There's probably a better way to pronounce that. We're at Lori for... Auntie L handmade at 60. Linda D at 65. Paula Whedon at 70. That was the first one that came through at 70, so it still goes to Paula Whedon. Let's see if it goes any higher. We got 88 for Joyce Jordan. <laughs> what a random number. <laughs> 88. <laughs> so it's at 88 now. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got up. Oh, Lori's out. We're at 88 with Joy's. Oh, Diane, Northside Mama is at 100. Oh, no, that was a big jump from 88. Diane, we're at 100. The print is, here, Scott, just hold it up. It's little owls. Little owls, polka dots, flowers, and um, then it has the princesses on the back. Let's see if he can get it close enough for you guys to, uh, can, you see can you see the owls? It's just little owl fabric. It's actually the leftover fabrics from Maxine and me, my daughter Maxine, making our mommy and I quilts. Those were the leftover fabrics from that. And then it has princesses on the back. So it's definitely a little girl's quilt. But it has flowers, it has leaves, it has polka dots. It has a leafy flowery looking thing. It has diamonds. And what else? Plain white squares and something else. What are we at still? We're at, Diana's at $100, so it's been a bit. I've been talking for a minute. All right, $100 to Diane going once. $100 to Diane going twice. Sold to Diane, Northside Mama, for $100. Yay! Thank you very much. Just email me. You already know my email. The one I am working on is called BQ 
four. There is actually another pattern that's called BQ by itself, and it's just the smaller squares. So this one is called BQ4 by Maple Island Quilts. Scott, we hold the pattern up a little bit closer to the screen? Maybe that they'll see it better. Huh? Uh, not right here. It's behind you. Behind me. Right, yeah, right there. Behind you? On, on, behind you, on the thing. Okay, well, you said behind Because I, I meant to say behind you. Oh, the ironing board is like 64-ish. 26. 26 by 66. By 64. I knew it was 64. 26 by 64 is how big my ironing board is. My ironing board needs to be recovered too. It's getting pretty flat and uh, pretty stained up. This next time, I'm not going to use a green fabric to cover it. <laughs> I'm going to use something more cutesy so that has more print or busyness to it. So that way I can uh, hide all the yuckies that get all over ironing boards. This is so weird, not sewing with a seam guide. I think I'm doing pretty good, though. Pretty darn good, if I say so myself. Couple more blocks to sew, and then I gotta work on the big ones. And those shouldn't take, well, maybe they'll take a little bit longer because they have longer seams. They're like 21 inches or something like that. 26 inches. They're pretty big blocks. These are pretty big blocks, too. I think they're 12 and a half or something when they're finished. Don't quite remember what the pattern said. Come on. Turn right there. There we go. Nested nicely. one more and then I'll be on to the next and then I'll press it all later and attach them together into rows and stuff later because this is too slow for me to do that Did you sign your quilt? um I don't know if there's a tag or anything on it you'd have to look Mr. Scotty because I have no idea did Dan ask Some of those I don't sign because people gift them. Alrighty. So here is, as you can see, a directional block. It has cactus on it. Why? Because I live in Arizona and I have cactus fabric. <laughs> Even the other fabric from this other blocks that I did is cactuses and the other fabric has cactuses <laughs> and the other ones the bigger fabrics have cactus blooms <laughs> so this one has the other cactuses you can see it's all directional so i was trying to keep with the directional theme so yeah Not lots of directional fabric, and that's why I was making sure that I attached my blocks in the directional fabric way. The other one isn't as directional. They're sideways, and the fabric is sideways, so technically those are sideways blocks. And they're going to stay that way, because there was no way to make those 21 inches using fat quarters, or 17 inches, or whatever the cut was. I don't remember. You'll have to get the pattern to find out. So 
So this makes 24 of the smaller blocks, and then I have 24 of the big blocks. And they're either purple or they're either a pale blue in color because I only had so many fabrics to work with. So there's all that. Oops, things are flying. So now I should have all these parts and pieces to do the big blocks, which are these fabrics. So I have this flower print and then obviously this purple print that you can see on the desk. And this is how these go. Like this, that, unlike that. Whee! There's a lot of work here. It's crazy. All right, I'm going to turn this sideways and chain piece these through. And hopefully I can keep my count. I don't think I cut more than I needed because the pattern specifically said, and I specifically followed, <laughs> which is very rare for me, but I did. Oh, the bobbin's going to run out in like, I don't know, four or five pieces. It's very, very low. This pattern is a lot easier to follow than some of the other patterns that I have put together recently, though. Let's just say that. <laughs> Most of the time I don't follow other people's patterns, but I had it, so I figured I'd make it. It all started because of my mother. She's like, oh, look, I got this pattern. I said, oh, look, I got this pattern, too. Oh, wait, I got the different version of it. She's like, let's make them together. And then she veered off direction into making something else. So since mommy made something else, I decided to just make this on my own. Yep. That's okay. The mother and I, the mother and I could make something else again something else. <laughs> she said blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, look at that. It lasted more than five. It's still going. It's a long lasting bobbin. And it wasn't even fully wound. Look at that. It's going to make all my blocks, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. There's one. There's two. I'm curious how this quilt is going to look because I put directional fabric and that's all the same six fabrics. One, two, three or five fabrics, it's the same five fabrics, and then the accent and um, ac accent and background are six, seven colors total. It's different uh, being able to see the bobbin as opposed to the other Juki. That's a, that's a good one. The other Juki, you can't see the bobbin. So you never know when it's going to run out. This one, you can actually watch it as it runs out. How do you like it? I like it. It's, I like it a lot. It's really nice. It's just, again, kind of slow, but that's okay. I'm using it, and it's making me a quilt, so I guess that's all that matters. It's, it's faster than that little brother machine, so that counts for something. And this is its replacement. I still am going to keep the little brother, but that's more for, like, when I have clients come to learn how to make a quilt in person for my classes, then they, if they don't feel like working with super fast machine or medium fast machine or fast, fast machine, they can choose from slow poke, not a slow poke and fast. <laughs> and it's using thread there. Yeah. And it's using my orifil thread up. So with no problems. Yeah. Yeah, at least a machine. I have a machine that likes the thread now that I have a ton of. Actually, I'll probably go through all these spools. And like, 
a month of sewing on this. <laughs> if I have to sew with this for a month, wait. it's going to last. They're not going to last very long. I'm going to buy more thread. <laughs> The shirt keeps riding up. It's not very fun. Oh. Yep, Candy, if you lived close, I sure as heck could have you over. I love sewing with my friends. I definitely love having friends over to sew. I've had it a few times now with a few different friends and even my daughters when my daughters sew. Um, it's definitely fun. Or when my mom is here, having someone in the sewing room with me, listening to music and just having a good old time. I like that. And there's no need to be on live stream when I do, but I definitely like to live stream when there's friends here. <laughs> That way you all know that, you know, you can meet other people that are on the stream, the ones that are willing to be on live stream. There's been a few that are not, though, but some have. Wow, this bobbin is really last. It looks empty, but it's not. It's still going. An optical illusion. Yes, it is an <laughs> optical illusion. It's messing with my eyes. I like that the thread dust is staying hidden under here. Like all the dust that comes up and stuff. Only there's a little bit down here, but the rest of it's all hidden under here. That's good. So like the thread is not. I do like that, that the thread is not overly excessively in my face with all the little dust particles. So I have less nose picking. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I have no idea. I'd have to read the book, but it looks the same as my other machines. All right. All right. We're going to break that. And then these go back this way. And then this unit gets sewed together. That way I'll make sure that everything stays good. I'm just gonna separate them all first and then make sure none of this falls while I'm at it. So instead of thread dust, I'm dealing with my hair and my face. <gasps> I know. It's fine. This machine is, I think it's on sale. Is it 1100 it's on sale for or 1300 I don't know. I looked at a lot of machines. I think this one's on 1300 There's a link to it right there. And see, there's a link that Scott put into the chat. What's the gadget you're using now, the purple? This is called the Cutting Gizmo by the Gypsy Quilter. They don't make it like this no more. Instead, you get ones that look like this from Purple Hobbies and so on and so forth. So you get this cool little contraption. You pull your little thing out and you put a blade inside of it. You put a used rotary cutting blade inside of it and then and you screw it in there. And then you can reuse your rotary blade to cut it. So they make, this is not the same company, but it's the same concept because the other ones look like it. So there's that. And my uh, cutting gizmo has to have rubber band around it because the razor blade kind of just falls right out. You can hear it. It just, it just moves around in there. It doesn't have anything holding it in. So it's the unsafe part about it. 
That's probably why they stopped making it. So I would just get the other kind. Most places, if you just type in thread cutter, that's what you'll get is that kind of thread cutter. I didn't think I'd get as far as I've gotten so far. Yeah, very shortly. I'm going to probably get these other sets sewn first real quick and then be done. All right, almost, almost, almost. And last one. And now to sew these units and then it'll be time to get off of here because I try not to go more than two hours on a live stream. That way everybody can have their Sunday back. Plus it's really late on the East Coast and other countries. And I still want to relax and watch TV and so on and so forth. Come on. That's two pieces. Don't sew it, Tiffy. <laughs> How many of you done that? Taken two pieces of fabric and sewn them together accidentally? You go to sew your seam and you get both pieces of fabric. And you didn't mean to. And you don't realize it until you're like, where'd the other extra piece go? But it was actually sewn in. <laughs> that happens to me quite often. Especially if I starch fabric. It sticks together. Like, it's like it glues it together almost. I don't know, but they get stuck together when they're starched and then I stack them all up. Yeah. But I've lost pieces and went, what the heck? Where did it go? And it was a second piece sewn. I only need 24 of these and I've lost my count already. I may have cut too much when it came to these little blue strips on the side, but I'm not 100% sure. I guess if I sew too many, it'll be okay though, because I could just use it in something else and my scraps. Bobbin is still going. I'm absolutely surprised. It really looks empty, empty. It looks emptier than empty now. Like, <laughs> I guess I'm not that good of a judge on Bobbin. Let me tell you, because now that I can see it, I'm like, is it going to run out? Is it going to run out? But it really looks like it's going to, but it hasn't yet. Obviously, because I'm still sewing. Kind of weird. I could see through the bobbin case on the little brother machine too. It's a see-through window as well, but I never really paid attention to it because I never really paid attention on that machine. I use the seam guide as well because it doesn't have a quarter inch. Well, you have to set up a quarter inch, but it doesn't have the 
little button on here to put the needle exactly at a quarter inch. This one does. So this one I have to watch that I'm not sewing with a seam guide. I gotta watch what I'm sewing. It's still going. It's still going. This is crazy. There's barely anything on it. I have hand sewed a seam with more thread than what it looks like it has on it. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, I had exactly enough pieces. Looks like I followed the directions better than I thought. I did get the most of my fabric. And one more of this and then 24 of the other pieces. Which go like this. So what I'm going to do is turn this whole thing around and keep it all attached. And sew these on. Let's see how much longer that I air sew now. And I still have bobbin, but my top thread broke again. Where does it even break at? They don't make it very easy to pull it out. You literally have to pull it back out the start path, which is actually not good. You're really not supposed to do that, but this is pretty tightly wound when it... Yeah. I have to keep watch on the thread up top too. Not just the bobbin, which is still going and going and going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny bobbin. It's just going and going and going. Uh. Mm -hmm. Stay where I put you. So now that I've sewn a lot slower than normal, what do you guys think? <laughs> was it easier to watch or was it frustrating to watch me <laughs> so slow? <laughs> I definitely wasn't as speedy as normal. You guys always say, you do it so fast, I missed the step. Well, not today. <laughs> it's funny. I guess I could probably still make a quilt just as fast. I just have to work at it longer throughout the day. That's all. What, am I using the wrong one? It has more. Oh, well, it has, yeah, it has this one, and then it has another one. Thank you, Teresa. Yes, thank you. They say it's only frustrating. It's only frustrating what? Oh, well. Yeah. It's only me, huh? Darn. I'm telling you guys, if you start sewing on a faster machine, for those of you that have ever switched, you probably know, like, oh, okay, I like this. <laughs> yeah. It isn't as loud at all. No. It's definitely a lot quieter. And it winds a bobbin in silence. 
pretty much. So that's cool. The other machine, the other Juki goes, <laughs> that's how it winds bobbins. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's definitely quieter though. And this bobbin is literally still going. Like, it looks like it's on its last thread though. Yeah, like, it just looks like it to me, but I'm not 100% sure. Can't tell. Only a few more pieces left to sew, and this bobbin lasted me the whole time. That's amazing. Amazing. With the Juki, I probably would have had to change a bobbin already. But that's because I have to use thicker thread on that machine. Because I use the big thread spools, because it doesn't like the little skinny Orafil 50 weight spools. Okay, it looks really bare in there. But I'm gonna keep going. Keep going. All right. Like three more pieces. Four more pieces. And then we can get off of here. And I can let you all go. Get back to your Sunday's stuff. Okay, I really see bobbin spool. I got three pieces left. And if it runs out, then that just, yeah, that's it. Oh, it has like two threads left on it. I could see it now. It's really, see if it makes it through this one. And it's out. It stopped. Literally one extra piece left. <laughs> ah, that's crazy. It lasted that whole time. Just going to throw this in here and sew this last piece while I say goodbye to everybody. Oh, goodness. Come on. Why doesn't it go through this little threading thing? I don't know. Whatever. Put the window back on. Finish this little tiny seam and the last one, and then I'm done. Oops. Be nice to have the foot down. So, thank you guys all for hanging out with me while I sew this pattern. It was called BQ. Four by Maple Island Quilts. It's actually a very easy pattern. It's not really that hard at all. Um, it makes sense if you follow the directions. And if you're piecing, you know, with directional fabric, just watch for that and do like I did and just use whatever size of the pattern that you're doing. Make sure you're holding it in that direction and go, okay, this one goes this way because it's flippable. So, but I'm definitely enjoying making it. And I got to admit, I'm having fun with my little Juki machine. Oh, Diane, thank you. Thank you very much. You didn't have to do that. All right, guys. So thank you. Thank you all for hanging out. And I'm going to go while I'm sitting doing this. Oh, the one that died, I had it for almost seven years. So I got it in the, uh, 2015. No. 2016, the beginning of 2016. Had to think about that one for a second. So, it's a long time. And it has billions and billions and billions of stitches on it. So, yeah, there's that too. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, I'm just waiting for Scott to press the button oh, while I. Tell me. Uh, 
<laughs> sit here and is that your way this, of telling me? Yeah. I'm just I'm waiting for Scotty to press the off button. So thank you guys all for hanging out and have a wonderful day and I'll see you next video. Bye. Bye.